Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have that a bond with a face amount of 100 that pays 8% semiannual coupons is callable on any coupon date from 15 and one half years after issue up to the maturity date, which is 20 years from the issue. Find the price of the bond to yield a minimum nominal rate of 10%, 8%, and 6%. And so for this problem, we're going to be calculating three different prices for this callable bond. We're going to be calculating the price when the yield rate is a nominal rate of 10%, 8%, and 6%. And what you're going to see is that for each one of these different yield rates, the way we are going to calculate the price of this callable bond is slightly different. And it can all be summed up by this table right here. If our coupon rate is greater than our yield rate, meaning the bond would be bought at a premium, then we want to calculate the price of the callable bond at the earliest date possible, right? As soon as the bond is callable. If the coupon rate is less than the yield rate, meaning that the bond would be bought at a discount, then we want to calculate the price of that callable bond at the latest date possible, right? And that will typically be its maturity date. And the reason that the date that we use to calculate the price of the bond changes depending on the type of the bond is because we want to calculate the lowest possible price for that bond, right? That's what it means when it says find the price of the bond to yield a minimum nominal rate of 10%, 8%, and 6%. That word minimum is key because that means we want to find the lowest price for that bond given that yield rate. And so that's what this table will allow us to do if we calculate the price at the right moment in time given the type of our bond. And so let's start with part A. Let's start with the nominal yield rate of 10%. And so that means in order to get the actual rate J, we will have to divide that percentage by two. And so for part A, we will have that J is equal to 0 0.10 divided by two, and that will be equal to 0 0.05. And then let's write down everything else we know about this bond. We know that the face amount or the face value is 100, and that is going to be the same as the redemption value because the redemption value is not mentioned anywhere else in this problem. And so we can assume that it is the same as the face amount. And so we will have that F is equal to C, which is equal to 100, right? F is the face value and C is the redemption value. And then we know that the bond pays 8% semi-annual coupons. And so that means that the coupon rate R will be equal to that 8% divided by two, right? So we will have 0 0.08 divided by two, which is equal to 0 0.04, right? That percent is a nominal rate that we need to convert to an effective rate in order to use it. And so the coupon rate in this problem is 0 0.04. Okay, that's not going to change throughout this problem. The only value that's going to change is our yield rate and potentially our value for N, which is what we want to figure out next. We are told that this bond is callable on any coupon date from 15 and one half years after the issue up until the maturity date, which is 20 years from the issue. Okay, so we know that in total, there are 20 years for this bond. And so if we multiply that by two, we will have the total amount of semi-annual periods or the total amount of coupon dates for this bond. And so that will tell us that N is equal to 40 right, that is 20 times two. That is the total amount of coupon periods. And so I'll just make a note of that here, that that is the total amount of coupon periods, because then we're going to have a second value of N, which is the moment in time when the bond becomes callable. And so in this case, the bond is callable on any coupon date from 15 and one half years after issue up to the maturity date. And so 15 and a half years in, we can call the bond. And so if we multiply that 15 and one half years or 15.5 by two, that will tell us the earliest date that this bond could be called or redeemed. And so N equals 31 would be when the bond is callable, right? So that would be the earliest date that the price of the bond could be calculated and N equals 40 would be the latest date that the price of this bond could be calculated. And so in order to determine which value of N we're going to use for part A here, where the yield rate is 0 0.05, we need to compare it to the coupon rate. And so in this case, J, the yield rate, is greater than the coupon rate, right? 0 0.05 is greater than 0 0.04. And so if we go to our table here, that means that our bond is being purchased at a discount because the yield rate is greater than a coupon rate or the coupon rate is less than the yield rate. And so that tells us that we're going to want to calculate the price of the bond at the latest date possible 
and that will give us the lowest price for this bond given that yield rate and coupon rate. And so we know that we're gonna be using the value of 40 for N when we calculate the price of this bond. But first, let's write down the formula for the price of a bond. We know that P is equal to the face value times the coupon rate times the present value of an annuity immediate. And so we'll have A and then N, the number of coupon periods, bracket J, the yield rate, plus the redemption value times the present value factor to the power of N using the yield rate J. And so for part A, we will have that the price of this bond is equal to the face value of 100 times a coupon rate of 0.04 times A, and then N is equal to 40, right? We're going to use the latest date, right? N equals 40 with a yield rate of 0.05 plus the redemption value of 100 times the present value factor to the power of N, which is still 40, using that yield rate 0.05. Okay, and so then if we wrote out this notation as well as this present value factor to be what they are equal to, we will have that this is equal to 100 times 0.04, and so that will be four times the formula for this notation, which will be one minus the present value factor to the power of 40 divided by 0.05 plus 100 times one divided by 1.05 to the power of 40. And this present value factor right here would be equal to this expression as well. They would be the same thing, okay? But then if you plug all this into your calculator, you would find that the price is equal to $82.84. That will be the price of the bond when the yield rate is 5%. This is the lowest price that you could get for this callable bond given that yield rate and the coupon rate for this bond. Okay, so then we can move on to part B where the yield rate will be a nominal rate of 8%. And so if we clean up our work here, we can calculate the price of the bond given that yield rate. And so in this case, J will be equal to 0.08 divided by two, and that will be equal to 0.04, but notice that that yield rate will be the same as our coupon rate. And so although it's not in this chart right here, when the yield rate and the coupon rate are equal, that means that your bond is being bought at par value, which means that the price will be the exact same as the face amount, right? We really don't even need to calculate the price of this bond using the price formula because the yield rate and the coupon rate are the same. That just means that your bond will be priced at the same amount as your face amount. And so in this case, if you wanted to use this formula for the price of the bond, you could, but it wouldn't matter which value of N you would use, you would still get that the price is equal to 100, which is the face value of this bond. And so if you want to, you can go through and use this formula. It would be the same as this calculation right here, but you would swap out the yield rate of 0.05 with 0.04, and you would find that the price is equal to 100 right, the same as the face value. And so that's a pretty simple one, so watch out for that. If your yield rate and your coupon rate are ever the same, you can immediately conclude that the price will be equal to the face amount. All right, and then we can move on to part C, which is to calculate the price when the yield rate is a nominal rate of 6%. And so in this case, for part C, J will be equal to 0.06 divided by two, and that will be equal to 0.03. And so in this case, the yield rate is less than the coupon rate, right? 0.03 is less than 0.04. And so in this circumstance, our bond is going to be bought at a premium because that coupon rate is greater than the yield rate. And so in this case, we are going to want to calculate the price of this bond at the earliest date possible which will be when N is equal to 31, the moment that this bond becomes callable. And so we will have that the price is equal to this same expression, except we're going to change some values, right? N is not going to be 40 anymore, it's going to be 31, and our yield rate is going to change from 0.05 to 0.03. And so we will have 100 times 0.04 times A31 bracket 0.03 plus 100 times the present value factor to the power of 31 using that yield rate of 0.03. And so if you calculated all of this in your calculator, you would find that the price is equal to $120.00. 
And so that is the price of this bond if the yield rate is 3% or a 6% nominal rate. Okay, and so that is how you use this chart for a callable bond to determine when to calculate its price. I guarantee you that if you were to calculate these two prices here, where we got $82 and then $120, if you were to calculate these two prices using the opposite dates that we used, you would get a price that is greater than the price that we calculated here. And so these two prices will be the lowest possible price for this bond in this problem, given those yield rates and those coupon rates. Okay, and so that is the end of this example. All right, so for our second example, we have that a 1,000 par value bond has 7% semi-annual coupons and is callable at the end of the 11th through the 16th years at par. Determine the prices to yield a minimum nominal rate of 7.5% and 6.5%. All right, and so in this case, we're just gonna be calculating two different prices for this bond, one price for each of these two different yield rates. Okay, and so let's write down everything we know about this bond, and then we will talk about how to calculate each of those prices. And so we know that the par value is 1,000, and so that is telling us that the face value and the redemption value are equal to 1,000, and so we will have that F is equal to C, which is equal to 1,000, and then we have that the bond has 7% semi-annual coupons, and so that 7% is a nominal interest rate convertible semi-annually that we need to convert to an effective rate. And so the coupon rate R will be equal to 0.07 divided by 2. And that will tell us that the coupon rate is 0.035. All right. And then we're told that the bond is callable at the end of the 11th through the 16th years at par. And so we have a range of dates here where the bond is callable, where the 11th year is going to be the earliest date and the 16th year is going to be the latest date. And so our earliest value of N will be equal to those 11 years times two, and that will tell us how many semi-annual periods there are in those 11 years or how many coupon dates there are. And so that means that N will be equal to 22, right? 11 times two is 22. And that is our earliest date, so I'll write early. And then our latest date would be those 16 years times two. And so n would be equal to 16 times two, which is 32. And that would be the latest date. All right, and so then let's start by calculating the price to yield a minimum nominal rate of 7.5%. And so note that that 7.5% is greater than that 7% for our coupons. And so we already know that our yield rate is going to be greater than our coupon rate, which means we're looking at a bond that's going to be bought at a discount because the coupon rate is less than the yield rate. And so that tells us that we wanna calculate the price at the latest date for this bond. And so that means we're gonna be using the value of N equal to 32. But first, let's find our yield rate. We know that J will be equal to that 7.5% divided by two because this is a nominal rate convertible semi-annually. And so we will have 0 0.075 divided by two, which is equal to 0 0.0375. All right, and then using that yield rate and the rest of these values we know, we can calculate the price of this bond using the price formula that we have right here. And so the price will be equal to the face value of 1,000 times the coupon rate of 0 0.035 times A, and then N is 32, bracket 0 0.0375, the yield rate, plus 1,000, the redemption value, times the present value factor to the power of 32, using that yield rate of 0 0.0375. Okay, and so then if you were to plug this into your calculator, you will have that the price is equal to $953.86. And so that is the lowest price of this bond given this yield rate and this coupon rate. Okay, but then what about if the yield rate was 6.5% convertible semi-annually instead of 7.5%? Well, in that case, note that that percent would be less than our coupon rate percent. And so we know that we're looking at a bond that would be bought at a premium, right? The coupon rate will be greater than the yield rate. And so we're gonna be calculating the price this time at the earliest date when N is equal to 22. And so let's first find our yield rate J. So we'll have J is equal 
2.065 divided by 2, which is equal to 0.0325, which means that our price will be equal to 1,000 times 0 0.035, the coupon rate, times A, and then N is equal to 22, bracket 0 0.0325, that new yield rate, plus 1,000 times the present value factor to the power of 22, using that yield rate of 0 0.0325. Right, this is the exact same expression we have up here, except we changed our value of N and the value of our yield rate. Okay, and so then if you were to calculate this in your calculator, you would find that the price is equal to $1,038.86. That would be the lowest price of this bond given this yield rate and this coupon rate. All right, and so with that, that is all I had for this examples video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.